<laughs> it's been 12 months since last time we were here at BlizzCon Anaheim, California, and it is time yet again to crown another 2016, this time, world champion. Who have been enjoying the tournament so far, but there's only one game left. So prepare yourselves, get your drinks ready, because this one is going to be a cracker, right? In I hope so. Nathaniel and Lord, and it is the best Zerg versus the best Terran. That it's meant everything's aligned. It, everything has gone to where oh. we wanted it to be, and hopefully this final delivers. We, we've had so many incredible storylines building, but they've all just kind of been blown away by <laughs> these two. Like we were so hyped on foreigners, we were so hyped on you know stats breaking away from his curse of round of four. None of that, none of that really shaped up in this in this final moment where we're like, nope. It's always been about Dark, it's always been about Beyond, the best Terran, the best Zerg, the biggest tournament. Like, I hope it lives up to that. And I know that's a weird thing to, to put out there, but honestly, with these two Titans colliding and fighting for $200,000, imagine a Game 7. Imagine this arena blowing up. Like, I am so excited for the potential, and I hope it lives up to it. And in TVC as well, I mean, I think it's safe to say that historically this has been the most explosive and fun, dynamic matchup that we've ever had. Even the Protoss players, we would always prefer watching Protoss, yeah. but if we were completely honest with ourselves, oh, yeah. we're like, yeah, this is probably better than two Colossus <laughs> shooting at each other, you know? Like, you know, you see all the micro, the splits, the veins, so... I mean, yeah, it should be awesome, like, everything that Jeff said. And yeah. Nathanius, a Terran player from the beginning of the tournament, there's only two of them. They could have been sniped, they almost did get sniped out of the tournament a couple of times. We saw Showtime beat Beyond in the early stages, but he recovered. We saw TY almost lose to Nurture, but he was able to stabilize. To have a Terran player in the final, I'm sure that warms your little blue heart. Us Terrans, we're a resilient race. We don't give up. We go into this, only two came in. You know, a lot of Terrans, a lot of players out there were pretty worried when you know, we had to have that team kill, as it were, TY going against Beyond, but Beyond has been the best Terran to follow all year. There are a lot of Terrans that have flashy play. You look at guys like Maru, but the consistency and the variety, the range, Beyond can do anything. We've seen him bust out the cheesiest of cheeses, even in that last semifinal, but he can play the command center first, he can play greedy, and he will seize all opportunities. It is so awesome to watch someone come up like this, his story, yeah. making himself, especially against Dark, who's a product of the ultimate Korean system that's built him into the Titan that he is. Byung came up the complete opposite way. I mean, I don't want to deflate any hype balloons here, but Byung said on stage himself that he has had to play every other race leading into the finals, and he's not feeling the most confident because he's had to, you know, switch mentalities, switch strategies. Is that an effect at all here? Neither is Dark, though. We haven't seen his ZVT. No. Dark hasn't played ZVT either this tournament, no. But, you, I mean, you can look at it from both sides then. I mean, it's an interesting consideration, right? Terran versus Zerg has generally been regarded as an extremely mechanical matchup. We have an idea of what both players will do according to the meta, you know? Beyond is more likely to cheese, right? But a lot of it is gonna come down to Beyond doing a lot of heavy assaults onto Dark. Whether Dark wants to bring out the aggression, he has busted a lot of very aggressive strategies, especially against his earlier opponents that weren't Terran. I guess that's kind of the interesting thing is we don't really know what they're gonna do against each other's race since it's the first time they'll be meeting. But well, we kind of forgot about Violet. I think even Beyond yeah. forgot about okay. Violet. Okay, well... <laughs> I mean, yeah, Beyond played a, Z, uh, a TVZ, but that honestly did not reveal anything of That's... the way that he likes to play this matchup. He's like, okay, you know, 16 Stim Marines killed 9 Zerklings. Like, all right, well, good luck, Dark. Yeah, You've got I this. Think, like, <laughs> I, I, think, I think Dark knows that he probably doesn't want to die to 16 Marines. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't seen anything yeah. else. On Dasan, probably don't do a queen drop. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, uh, I know, any thoughts here? I know you're a Protoss player, but I mean, you've, you've said this is a matchup that what you're looking forward to. Absolutely, it's kind of a dream final because you know that it's going to be fireworks. I said a couple of times I was expecting a close series and a few of them were not that close. The ZBZ no. earlier today, I really thought it was going to be closer and I really thought the laser at least one, maybe even two maps was wrong in that one. But this, uh, there should absolutely be zero way that this is going to be one-sided <laughs> one way or the other. Yeah. The maps as well, like some maps pretty Terran favorite, some maps pretty Zerg favorite. That should obviously give both players some points on the board. And I mean, you got a lot of dark as well. Consistency, man. Won an SSL, made it to the final of another SSL, came in there as the king of all Zergs, and delivered, and has dropped one map, one map, this entire tournament. Like, 
Uh, he yeah. should at least drop more than one map this finals, otherwise something is weird. I mean, 2016, uh, the reason why they are considered the best Terran, the best uh, finals all over the place, you mentioned it yourself, Dark, now three finals in the last nine months is incredible. Incredible. That's so consistent. Yep. And then you've got Bionu, final of GSL, winner of GSL is here looking to do it again. And that's uh, that's kind of extreme as well. Like that makes sense on paper. The person that wins the latest GSL is probably has a very good shot at making it to the final of BlizzCon. But for some reason that doesn't always happen. Even the opposite, you know, the guy that we always hype up is like, he's the reigning GSL champion, like round of 16, exit. And we're like, well, okay, you know, let's spin this another way. <laughs> There's someone else out there, but you know, uh, Bjorn living up to the hype. And do you mean, uh, I would almost say insane amount of pressure as well, because he is the Terran Hope, and he's the player that everyone loves to cheer for, even in the foreign scene. I mean, you saw it last series. He's got so many fans wherever he plays, but he's delivering when it matters the most, and that's very impressive. All right, final thoughts and gentlemen, the finals. I hope for you in the audience now, you grab your seat. This is going to be an amazing series, but... Kevin, final thoughts here before we go into it. I think Dark is godlike, and I think he's the best Zerg in the world, but I've said Beyond since day one, so obviously I'm not switching now. I still think Beyond is going to do it, and he is going to be the happiest BlizzCon winner we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited to see this guy that, as a Terran player, I've been following all year. It's impossible not to be happy for this guy when he wins. He shows it, he wears his heart on his sleeve, and every victory, he, you can see just how much he appreciates the opportunity to be here fighting for this trophy, fighting for this prize. I just can't wait to watch what happens. Uh, what has, we've been talking about these guys the whole tournament because they just keep winning and they keep being some, the most dominant players here. So I, it finally ends. This is an amazing end to a tournament. And I just, like I said, I hope it lives up to the hype because the potential for this is incredible. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. All right, we're done here on the couch. It is time to begin the WCS Global Finals 2016 Grand Finals. Please be good. Please be good. The 2016 World Championship Series Global Finals is brought to you by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. champion says he's feeling extremely confident. Going up against him is the best Terran player in the world, called the One Man Army and GSL champion. It does not get better than this. Give it up for Dark and Bjorn! <laughs> What's up, guys? We're tasting our toes. This is, and this is the 2016 StarCraft World Championship Series Grand Finals. Dark versus Pion. Oh my God, Tasteless. Here we are, two champions of Korea, two champions of the WCS system here in the Grand Finals, playing for $200,000, but more importantly than that, 
being the world champion of the hardest game ever. Dark, a lot of people are saying, is the best Zerg in the world. He's had a lot of accomplishments. But Bjorn, uh, this guy won a GSL Code S without a team. He may become the world champion without a team now, Artosis. Yeah, it, I mean, Dark right now, no question he's the best Zerg in the world. He has been crushing everybody left and right. And he says in his video interview that I'm the best. Maybe there are people that can rivalry, but no one is better. And he wants to be the best there ever was. He wants to go beyond what Slayer's Boxer even has done. But he's going up against the greatest micro player of all time. Just a, a complete monster in Byun, who, by the way, is pretty much the most humble player we've ever had. Yeah, it's interesting. We've never seen a player ever have control as good as Bion. Uh, but going up against Dark, this guy is such a well-rounded Zerg. He's a guy who can do all of it. He can do cheese, he can harass, he can play a macro game. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these two styles uh, mix together. Now, it's going to be a long series. These guys are going to have a lot of opportunities to study each other and try to adjust and adapt to each other's play styles. Um, and we're going to be starting this game off here on Galactic Process. It's going to be cool to see what strats they pick out first. Yeah, it really is, especially in a bet best of seven. There's just so much time for each other to change things up and get into their opponent's heads. But the level of these players, it is too high to end early. As we can see, a lot, a lot of fans really on both sides here in the audience. By the way, it is just completely packed here at BlizzCon. Yeah, I look, I think this may be the best BlizzCon finals we've ever had. Uh, classic Terran versus Zerg, gonna be so cool. And guys, it looks like our game is ready. So let's make some noise. Let's get hyped. This is the 2016 StarCraft World Champion Series Grand Finals, Dark versus Bjorn. All right, there's no turning back now. One of these two players is gonna become the world champion of StarCraft II here in 2016. In the upper right, in the blue, make some noise for Bion! And his opponent down here in the bottom left, in the red, he is Dark! Guys, as we start this epic best of seven, make sure to get out there, hashtag WCS2016. Get on Facebook, whatever you want. Call your mom, let everyone know the two <laughs> best gamers in the world are about to go at it head to head. All right, so as we start things off, it does look like we're gonna have Bion going for that double barracks here, getting the gases, whereas Dark gonna go for a quick expand here. Now, uh, Bion is known for doing a lot of very aggressive builds early on, and it's really different watching Bion compared to any other Terran, because a lot of times, he gets in a fight that should be, uh, by any other measurement, a normal exchange, but he controls it so well, he just wins. So uh, we wanna be very careful to see how these engagements go early on, because Dark may just fall apart if Bion out controls him. Yeah, he, we've yet to see anyone that can actually micro better than Bion. He is the best micro that there's ever been. Like, his name will go down as that for a long time to come. And, it's, and with Two Racks Reaper, he's going to have a lot of potential with that. It's kind of strange, because we don't normally have players that dominate this hard just based off of their control. Um, and not even just, I'm not talking about harass, I mean just in a straight up battle, he's just better than you. He ekes out more damage, he gets more value out of his army. Um, so let's see what happens here. Beyond somebody who popularized this build, um, especially here in 2016, uh, getting the Reaper out and many of them to try to do some pressure, get some harass off here, shave off drones, creep tumors, mm -hmm. um, delay mining, anything he can do. Yeah, and this is a two racks Reaper, not a three racks Reaper, so a little bit less all in. Already going for a command center as well, so he wants to follow this up with economy. I feel like this is a big nod toward dark skill where he says, I can't kill you with this, maybe I can get an edge, but you're not gonna die. 
And of course, Bion being known for somebody who has done three racks Reaper before, I think this is a smart move to start things off. Remember, uh, you don't just win one game to become the world champion. You have to win a series of games. So the opening builds are very important. That's the information your opponent's going to be using to try to adjust in later games. So a lot of thought goes in how to start this off. Do you cheese? Do you do uh, an, al an alternate alternative build, excuse me, to what you would normally do to try to get them on the wrong footing later on? And you know what? Dark is already a little bit in desperation mode. He didn't really figure out right away that this is a two barracks reaper. So he's been very careful not to build things at his natural expansion. He's getting the roach one. Oh my god, the queen going very low. Just barely gets away. The reapers jump back up trying to finish it. But the lings are there and a reaper goes down. He does take that one reaper out. And that a lot of times is enough to force the Terran player to back off. Uh, the Reapers get exponentially scarier the more they are in a big number since they can heal up so quickly. So a good play there by Dark deflecting Bion's aggression. So far, he hasn't really gotten that much done. Look at this. Both sides just playing very well. He's gotten a queen, sure, but nothing else. Uh, only one Reaper killed by Dark. But now that he has some Ravagers out, these Reapers are not going to find too much more damage. He's coming down here now, just trying to do whatever else he can. Uh, we also do see, yeah, as he's taking his third base over here, um, up at the top. This is an interesting way to play. Now, remember, when you get a lot of Reapers like this, it, it is a threat to the Zerg, but you are not making Marines, for instance. You're not making any of the core units that are going to give you a lot of value later on in the game. But uh, because he's got an into uh, Dark's face, he can try to sneak out this third base and then try to stabilize before Dark can do a proper counterattack. But that's not easy. Yeah, no, it's very hard. You're kind of walking a tightrope with a build like this because eventually the Reapers aren't going to do anything else. They're still finding little ways in to try to get something done. But look at this. He killed a Zergling, lost two Reapers. And that's kind of how it's going to go. They just generally don't transition well to the late game. We do see some Ravagers coming up here. That third command center about to finish. Uh, Zerg, in just a little bit here, may feel that he has enough drones out that he can actually then switch into making attacking units. And with these Ravagers coming up here, I think there's a chance we could see him try to push out. And remember, uh, with Terran on three bases this early in the game, that's a lot of different locations that you have to protect. Mm. So uh, it may be up to Dark to try to hit various points wherever the Terran is not. And that's why Bion is going to want to keep these Reapers alive if he keeps an eye on what Dark is doing, where he's exiting, what units are being made, then he can stop himself from dying to any sorts of attacks that Beyond, or rather Dark, wants to bring out. And with Beyond sending this tank out here, I think this is pretty smart because this only adds more pressure. The Reapers can cover the tank, and this actually might force uh, Beyond to, or rather Dark, to stay back a little bit further here. And that, in, in, in a sense, keeps this third base up at the top for Terran alive and safe. Oh, and you see this is the micro up beyond right now. You see his screen pulling back, not really taking any damage, just trying to delay Dark right now and shave off anything he can. Uh, now, I am a little bit worried here uh, for Dark. If he doesn't get out and start doing anything pretty quickly, we have double eBays going down right now uh, for our Terran player. He's going to be upgrading very heavily. Zerg upgrading as well, but I think if Bion has a large enough army going into the mid game and late game here and he can control it well, Dark is going to have a hard time. I think Bion's opening has really played into his strengths. It certainly has. He's in a good position. His economy is strong. He's continuing to tech up. He's keeping Dark in his base. All really good things for a Terran to do. And here he comes back again using this very strong position on Galactic Process with the Tank of Axe. The Reaper is coming up, taking some damage. Looks like a couple of them will get away. Oh, oh the Does manage to escape. Losing that medevac with the tank would have been huge um, and giving Dark a lot of control in this game. But Dark is doing a very good job actually pushing out. It looks like he's, yes, he is. He's going to expand uh, over here to the bottom center. Now, uh, on this map specifically, uh, as Zerg continues to expand, you're generally expanding towards the Terran player, which is not something Zergs ever really want to do, but just due to the the starting positions and the structure of it, that's going to be the case. So most likely when Bion is pushing, he'll probably be pushing into that expansion that's being built down there in the bottom center. Yeah, you're definitely right about that. He can push downhill as well, utilizing that high ground advantage. When will he decide to move out is the big question because Dark has to get an army ready by then. That's right. Uh, Dark continuing to get all the upgrades. Uh, definitely one of the scariest players in the world in the late game. And, um, you know, I've been playing played a lot of StarCraft, and I've uh, definitely cast a lot of StarCraft. The worst kind of Zergs to play against are the ones that do not uh, let you get out of your base, really. Yeah. Um, or if, if, if they're being harassed, don't really take that much damage, and then get into a very, very solid place in the, uh, in the late game and have all these different tools at their disposal to punish you. Well, he's already well on his way, but Bion is moving out right now. He has three tanks and a couple medevacs with these Marines. Of course, 1-1 just finished up. They already have Stim. 
This is a strong attack, and he's really utilizing the terrain here, keeping those siege tanks on the high ground. This is a really good push location here, because he can juggle the tanks down on the low ground like we're seeing right now. And if the Banelings and Lynx try to come up and attack it, he'll then, as we see here, uh, shoot them back up onto the high ground. We have the Banelings now coming Ooh. down. Good control there by Bjorn. Dark taking a serious beating there as he retreats back to that hatchery. Yeah, and the fact that he's keeping that creep back makes it much harder to chase down this army. The creep gives you such a nice speed bonus. And Zerg, you really want it out there, but Pyun starting to push into this fourth base. Dark trying to stop him, but it looks really hard to do. Dark is now coming up here. Uh, he's hitting the top. He does take out the tank on the medevac, and the other tank does go down. Only Marines, and now one more tank over here to push in. But Pyun still might have enough to take out Dark's expansion. Uh, that was a good move by Dark, but this is not over yet. Beyond kind of regrouping, walking around to the other side. There's a lot of places that the rocks haven't been destroyed yet here, so he can actually siege the back of the expansion as well. Beyond really abusing the uh, geography on this map now. He's found another location to hit. And not only is Dark taking damage with this expansion, he's not mining there, which means he's not reaping any of the benefits. Meanwhile, up here at the north, we do have a Ling drop coming and hitting these SCVs, but it may be inconsequential compared to this attack here by Beyond. Oh, Dark is coming around, though. He's brought all of his units onto the high ground to take care of this. Some great cross and vials go down. He takes out the sea chase. Still quite a few oh! Marines, but... Oh! Huge hit there. And for all the damage that Dark took back there, uh, Beyond did lose so many SCVs, but meanwhile, this game is really picking up. We have Marines down here taking on this hatchery location. They do not take out the hatchery, but the harassment is not gonna stop. Looks like he wants to try to get in the main and then will now rotate back uh, elsewhere as both these guys are taking a serious beating. But uh, if we could take a look at the supply for a second, it is 131 to 101, which generally means it seems like Beyond should be ahead, especially yeah. in this next push. You're very right about that. He has a super strong army. He took a bruise to his economy, but he bruised Darks as well. Continue to push forward into this fourth base. It looks like Dark is just going to give this up for the time being. The hatchery is going to go down. Dark is trying to use some counterattacks to cripple Beyond to slow down his progress here on the map, but it does not seem like it's going to be enough. It's now a three-base Zerg versus a three-base Terran, which is never a good thing for the Zerg. The Zerg always want to be ahead in expansions. And Beyond marching right over the creep is continuing to push it. I don't know if Dark can hang on. Dark has almost nothing left here. The Marines pushing forward. That third base about to go down. He's trying to counterattack, but it doesn't work. G G Beyond wins game number one in a very convincing fashion. A really fantastic game to start off this best of seven for the title of world champion. And Beyond does not disappoint. Gets into his macro, hits some nice timing pushes, utilizing the terrain of this map and the range of those siege tanks. Dark held on valiantly and did some great counter harassment but Beyond just got too much done on that fourth base. I, I do wonder uh, how that game would have looked on a different map because Beyond really understood all the angles at which he was pushing. He could exploit his opponent. He really got in there um, and slowed uh, Dark down as Dark was trying to develop a healthy economy. And I think that is what really let that final push come in and, and give the knockout blow. Mm, I, you know, I think that everything about the way that Bjorn played that was super strong. He walled in with an aggressive build, went right into macro from it, and kept the pressure on. With that pressure, Dark wasn't able to get out there. As you said, it can get really scary if Zerg kind of keeps you in your base, keeps you back. Of course, Terran is the one that gets to be aggressive early on most of the time, but... He never stopped, and Dark couldn't crush the armies hard enough. Yeah, um, let's see what Dark can do coming up here, if he can manage to stabilize in a macro game. Also, Beyond did do a really interesting uh, opener there. He didn't do three-rack yeah. streeper, he did two-rack streeper, but then he expanded right after it. So it was kind of a half-hearted opener, but I think part of that was to put Dark on his back foot yeah. and really over-defend that because Beyond is known throughout all of 2016 for doing these fantastic uh, Reaper rushes that a lot of times will just win the game uh, or pretty much seal the deal. Um, so Beyond also might have a, a little bit of a transition in his own builds as Dark is going to try to adapt to his. Yeah, you know, this next game, though, it's on a very different map, New Gettysburg. Really our biggest macro map in the pool. I think it'll look a lot different from that first game. Our game is ready. This is game number two. Beyond versus Dark. 
in a battle to become the 2016 StarCraft World Champion. In the bottom left, in the blue, winning game number one, he is Bjorn. And his opponent here in the bottom right, the best Zerg player in the world, he is Dar. And already tasteless, game number two getting a little bit interesting. Dark going to be opening up with Quite a quick gas and pool, but for him, that's not so weird. He does like to open up with very fast speedlings. It keeps him safe and sometimes allows him to do a lot of damage to his opponent. So this map is quite different from a lot of the other maps we have here. So uh, whenever we cast this, we want to point uh, this out. There is a small bridge down here uh, in the lower center. Uh, of the map, and this does give you quick access to the uh, opposing player's base. It's a one-on-one -on -one map, um, so you're always going to know your opponent's starting location. Two islands down at the bottom. I don't believe that'll be as much of a factor in this matchup, but we just want to get that out of the way here in case uh, there is some island play. And most of the game, uh, if it doesn't end quickly, is going to be focused around the top uh, half of the map, with a lot of pushes going on there uh, and struggles to control, uh, you know, the center of the map. Yeah, it's certainly the case, and, you know, we normally don't see games end quickly here, so right. we get to really big macro situations where both players will have four, five, sometimes six or seven bases, and have the full tech trees, all the upgrades, and that's a situation that's kind of crazy. Dark is super scary in a, a, a place like that, but Beyond has shown in the past he can hold his own against a Zerg that has everything. Beyond coming out here with that first Reaper, just checking around. Uh, Dark, as you were saying, Artosis did go for a quicker pool here. He wants to get that Ling speed out to try to get some control here early on. Uh, Beyond does like to really lean on his opponent right from the start of a lot of these games, um, which is, of course, what we would expect from a player who's really uh, focused on control. That's his real star ability uh, coming out of here. Uh, now, Dark, really the game for Zerg, unless Zerg does try to do some kind of wild early rush, is to just get enough workers, get a strong enough economy, get enough bases, uh, and enough options in their tech tree that they can kind of respond and react to whatever Terran does, eventually shutting it down. And um, in a TVZ especially, it's harder for Terran to get more and more and more bases. There's, you know, it, Terran can't, you know, for instance, take the top center easily. That's not, that's not no. really a thing. So uh, Zerg, in some sense, wants to kind of exhaust the Terran economically or just smash it up with their attacks so they can then do a counterattack and win. And if anyone can do that, it certainly is dark. Right. But, you know, we're still pretty early off in this game. We can see the build order that Bion has chosen. This is a very old type of strategy going for Hellions and Cloak Banshees, but dark immediately scouting being very well known for going for quick overlord speed so he can see exactly what's coming his way. We have some Hellions now going down on that narrow bridge over here towards the right. And it looks like they will be coming up over here uh, to try to do some poking. Ideally, uh, you know, if they could get any drones or deny any expanding, they would, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. Maybe just try to take out some creep tumors. And this is what we would call applying pressure. You're not really intending to, to win the game with this. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. He's yeah. Like, okay. That, that was a, that was that a was bit a split optimistic. Second, that was a split-second <laughs> decision. Normally, you don't try to go in, but, uh, you know, sometimes players like Dark will overmake drones because they're so confident that you won't approach them, but uh, he would have actually gotten trapped there. Yeah. That would have fallen into exactly what we were talking and about a second ago about surrounding their army and taking it out and just getting bigger. Truthfully, if he loses all those units right there, there's almost nothing stopping Dark from getting to whatever he wants to get to in this game. So good thing he turns around. But now the Banshee is out, so he can continue to push out here and get some pressure on. Now Cloak is about to finish, but the Lair is going to as well, so he should be able to get enough detection that the Banshee doesn't do too much damage. Banshee coming down here now. He wants to get as many workers as he can. We have one kill so far now, too. It looks like the Queens will then zone the Banshee out. Um, but to what you were saying earlier, Artosis, it's definitely a matchup where, especially against a player like Dark, if you were to make one or two mistakes mm -hmm. uh, early on against him, he would just get so far ahead of you. It'd be so difficult to win the game from there on out. Well, he's pushing back this Banshee. It ends up getting a few kills there as well. So 
the Banshee did all right, but, you know, Byun scanned Dark, and all he saw was double Evolution Chamber, which is going to trigger him to get into double Engineering Bay very quickly as well. But nothing too crazy happening so far. Both players kind of respecting each other with just very light harassment. Banshee now coming in here towards the main. Meanwhile, the Hellion's coming up from the top. He's hoping to maybe divert a uh, dark screen to where he might be focusing on this Banshee, and then the Hellions can come in and do damage uh, from above. And it looks like we're going to see him try to do that right now as this uh, Banshee is going to get cornered. But meanwhile, up here, no, Dark is ready and shuts down the surprise attack. So Beyond uh, attempting to come in there and cripple a Dark's economy actually ends up a little bit behind because of it. And you know what? Right now, Dark has shut down absolutely everything. They're even on economy at the moment, worker-wise, but Dark is definitely going to be able to get ahead from there. He's Zerg, he can pump out a ton of drones after killing all the aggressive units and get into his late game tech. We have some of the Lings now moving out on the map. He's trying to take out any spotters here uh, for uh, Bjorn, and you can see this Reaper's going to try to run for it. Looks like he should be able to catch up to that and eliminate that. Uh, ideally, the Zerg want the map to be completely dark for the Terran. They just don't want Terran to know where the Lings are, what's out there. Um, so keeping that clean um, and completely Terran-free is, is one of the main goals here for Dark, as well as spreading the creep across the map so that he has easy access to anywhere that Beyond might be attacking him. You know, it's funny that you say that, uh, you know, Terran wants the map to be completely dark uh, for Zerg. Well, it, it's Dark true, wants to be everywhere for Beyond as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely a matchup where if you hit your opponent's army at just, you know, a surprise angle and they're not ready for it, uh, because both Zerg and Terran units are in this matchup, especially in this phase of the game, are quite brittle. Uh, they can die very quickly. So if you get caught off guard, you can lose everything right away. Ooh, oh, this is very dark. Drop being set up. Yep. Yeah, he is going to try to drop these right on these workers here. And um, we'll see if it works. Normally what Dark does is he does it to two, in two to three different locations. Or, like we see here, when the Terran's pushing. And he has a lot of vision on the map so far. If you look at the minimap in the bottom left, you see Dark is all over the place. His creep spread is fantastic so far. He's keeping updates everywhere with overlords flying around the map. So he knows exactly when Gun is moving out. And that, when the battle begins, is when those Banelings will drop. That's right. He wants to wait until there's already uh, uh, units being attacked to drop this in here so that uh, Bjorn's screen is in the wrong location. It's going to be coming in right now. And I don't believe that Bjorn is ready. Ooh, very well done right there. Looks like he'll end up killing nine SCVs total and causing him some lost mining time. A very successful drop from Dark. Beyond now scanning, pushing through here, taking out these creep tumors as much as he can. Uh, a good Zerg like Dark was going to stay back until he absolutely has to attack, mustering more and more forces for an eventual surround. Beyond, though, apparently pretty confident is going to keep pushing despite having taken that big blow in the worker count. Yeah, you know, he wants to push the creep back, like you were saying. He can't let Dark get to the halfway point because you're just not going to kill a Zerg that that's far out. But he's not actually getting any real damage done. There are four bases here for Dark, and off of four bases, Zerg can do absolutely anything. We see Terran moving over here to the upper right. Dark uh, getting pretty bold here with the amount of expansions he has. Beyond is going to have to try to do some damage pretty quickly here now. We see some Widow Mines, Marines, Medivacs, and Marauder moving up here along with the tanks and Marines in this shot right here. Is Beyond going to be able to hit this expansion, this angle, just like in game one? Very good for Beyond. He definitely knows how to set his army up. Oh, this is a great snipe right now. That fourth base going down is crucial. The Hive had just finished, which means Ultralisk Tech is on the way. That was probably the last time he oh, could get that so easily. Counterattack, SCV not there to block the links in time. They oh. spill through, but there are some Widow Mines to help defend. Oh, beautiful micro there from Byun as well. Great connections on the Widow Mines, and that counterattack does nothing. Well, we have the Widow Mines being planted over here. Bion is still hungry to take out more bases. This is more aggressive than most of the Terrans we've ever cast at Artosis. A lot of Terrans would take out that base and then back up, but not Bion. He's going to tear down the rocks right over here and try to hit the base south of this. Oh. Oh, no, he scans, he decides otherwise. Yeah, I oh, guess looks like he's still debating it, actually. Well, he's definitely trying to act like he's going to attack, but... This is more aggressive than most Terrans we see because yeah. this is dangerous. If Dark kills all of that, the game is nearly his. Yeah, well, and if Byun kills this base, the game is nearly yeah. his. So 
Uh, normally, Terran players would play a little bit more conservatively, especially if they're taking out this base, but it looks like he's regrouped. He's coming in, and it's going to be up to Dark now, who's going to stay back here patiently, as we can see, uh, to try to take this on at the last second. And here he goes now! That is a lot of Widow Mines in there as well. They do get some connections, but the Bailing's rolling in. Also, is coming up from the south as well, and Bion has to run. It looks like Bion has bit off more than he can chew. The Terran army now retreating as Dark has the opportunity to counter across the map and maybe even take out one of Bion's expansions. All right, but Bion is here and ready. A nice micro there by Bion against the Banelings. He does have to cancel his command center at that fourth base, but with Liberators sitting there in defense, Dark has to turn around and regroup. Well, very nicely done. He did shut down that expansion over there in the upper left. Now regrouping here. He has links and Ultras. Important thing to note is Ultras alone um, are not strong units, but when they have a bunch of links with them, the links surround the units and the Ultras come in and do all the damage because the units can't move out of the way. So uh, right now, Dark's doing a really good job having a healthy balance of Ultralists and links, and of course, Queen's here to transfuse the Ultralists if they need to be transfused. Uh, and while that's happening, he's actually teching up to a Spire. A lot of times when Zerg win games, if it's this late into the game, what they'll do is they'll throw their entire army in there and sometimes even completely ship tech into uh, another type of uh, set of units yeah. that, that kind of counters whatever Terran has left over. Yeah, it definitely could be if they trade armies, but here we go. Ooh, starts to attack up. The Liberators are quite scary, and this is part of the reason he's getting that Spire. He's probably going to get out a lot of Corruptors so that when he attacks with his full force, the Corruptors are taking down Medivacs and taking down Liberators. Okay, we see uh, Dark just trying to keep Terran at bay, pushing in here. It's a little bit tricky for Dark in a situation like this. He doesn't really have any range units besides the Queen, so he takes damage every time he does this. Is he going to commit? No. Beyond, as you guys can see right now, he's very good at kiting those units and making them run backwards and avoiding damage. Uh, and that's really bleeding dark here. It really is, especially considering we're seeing the creep disappear. And the less creep there is, the harder it is for a Zergling Ultralisk army to actually get in there and deal damage to Terran. So Dark is buying time. You know, he's about to have his Vipers come up and maybe help out with some abducts, some blinding clouds, and then maybe some Corruptors can come in to push back those Liberators. We actually saw a command center floating out over there. He's going to expand towards his push. Hold up, we have uh, we have Liberators being harpooned in here. The Ultras and Links are coming in. The Bay Links don't quite have a good connection set up, uh, but still the Liberators continue to be juggled back beyond an insane position. Oh my god, he's running around everywhere trying to set those Liberators again. Has to pick up. Beyond running towards that fourth base, Dark stuck on the other side of the map, and Bion is going for the fourth. Unbelievable! He actually looped around there. He's now dropping to this expansion. These Bailings need to get in there quickly because that hatchery is at low health. He does come in. It looks like he may root back. Again, remember though, Bion only on three bases, where Dark is in a very good spot economically as a Zerg player. Yeah, after that battle, it seems like Bion is really on the ropes. This army from Dark is a Terran's worst nightmare, and Bion just doesn't have that much left. He's setting up a defensive line in front of his natural, but he needs a fourth base. You see, he wants to take one over here, but there's no way with that huge Zerg army on his doorstep. Uh-oh, it looks like Dark may be going for the jugular here. He's coming in right now. 190 supply to 110. The Ultras, the Lynx, the Bane Lynx are coming in, and that is GG. Just an awesome macro game coming out of Dark. He deflects the Banshees, he deflects the Hellions, and macros up into Zerg perfection. This series is already fantastic. Tasis is tied up one to one. You're absolutely right, Artosis. I, Dark did that exactly the way he was supposed to. He just stayed ahead, he held off Bion's attacks. Uh, Bion, we were talking about this before, was at, at times a little bit too greedy. He pushed a little bit too hard and Dark shut it down, and eventually, after enough failed attacks, Bion couldn't get a third base. Not only that, he couldn't defend um, the remaining bases that he had. Yeah, you know what? He was trying to stay aggressive. He did pick off that fourth base, and, you know, he almost got the new fourth base that was kind of in the pocket there, but... Right, the one close to his push. Yeah, when you choose to open with something like Banshee Hellion, and it does very little damage, the Zerg player gets into a great position to get into that big macro game, which is what Dark wanted there. Well, it's tied up 1-1. Our next map is going to be on Frozen Temple.
Ooh. This is going to be very interesting for these yeah, two. Yeah, I think we're going to see some very aggressive play from Bion here. Could be another Reaper heavy game, but also it could be Bion's signature build order, which is going for a double medevac stim timing attack. Really hard for Zergs to hold on to their third and fourth base against it. Yeah, this may be a trickier map for Dark. Now, that doesn't mean that Dark has to stay um, a macro Zerg. He can always opt to cheese it um, here or try to do some kind of rush, some kind of timing. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, our game is ready. This is game number three, a battle between Dark versus Begun, Begun to become the StarCraft World Champion. Introducing our players down here in the bottom right, the best StarCraft micro in the world. He is Pion! And his opponent here in the upper left, in the red, he is Dark! Dark already opening up with an anti-cheese type of build here. Once again, going for the fast gas, going for the fast pool before his expansion. And uh, that's that's a good thing because we have two barracks already on the way for Bjorn, which tells us probably a lot of Reapers are going to be going towards dark side of the map. Yeah, I think Bjorn really liked uh, how game one went last time. Uh, now, game two, that map's really weird, so... Uh, we probably won't have a game that looks exactly like that. No, you're right about that. But uh, I think I think on this map, it might be, um, I don't know, I think it would behoove Beyond to try to be a little bit more of the aggressor. When, when you're good at being in your opponent's face and you're not really losing units, it's really easy to predict exactly what their next few possible moves are because they have to be responding perfectly to you or they've already lost the game. And look at this, Tasteless. It looks like Bion is going for three Barracks Reaper. This is a signature Bion build. He has not just the greatest Micro in the world, by far the best Reapers in the world. He can do magical things with those Reaper grenades. His kiting is perfect. He keeps the Reapers alive for a long time. And this, like, he might be able to kill Dark with this. Yeah, you, you and I used to joke about this a long time ago. We, we would see this on GSL where uh, sometimes people go three Rex Reaper and it didn't seem like it was actually that good. And then Beyond started doing it and pretty much winning all the time with it. But this is a very in-your-face style of play that really requires you to not make any mistakes as a Terran player. Already getting up here, bruising that queen a little bit. And notice, that, look at that micro. The queen can't even hit this Reaper <laughs> right now. But what he's trying to do is just take health off of it. The Reapers, once they're not attacked for a bit, regen very, very quickly. See that? It's almost back to full health. Brings up the second one, and he's continuing to work on the Queen. And you, you're just trying to drain the Zerg here. Do you want them to lose uh, Zerglings, HP on the Queens even? Uh, make them lose a drone or two if you can. And this starts to pile up. And if the Zerg isn't doing the, uh, everything perfectly correct, it will snowball out of control very quickly. It certainly will, but speed is about to finish. That's a nice thing about the build order that Dark chose for this game. The speed is a lot quicker, so Bion has to be more careful now when micro in these Reapers. All right, uh, good job here by Bion. Whoa! Whoa! Fancy stuff right there. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Uh, we have the Reapers coming up now. They're going to try to poke into this expansion. Of course, no drones can mine here until this expansion is deemed safe by Beyond. That does put, uh, rather by Dark, that does put Dark in a, a bit of a, uh, a pickle here mm -hmm. as he wants to be mining from that expansion as soon as possible to build up his economy. Now, we also have some roaches that have been made here. We have three more about to come out. And there's really not a lot that Reapers can do face-to-face uh, -face against roaches. No, it, you know, Bion definitely can micro pretty well against it, but Roaches beat Reapers. Uh, so we'll see how good the micro is of Bion if, if Dark wants to end up attacking. But Dark is getting safer and safer by the moment right now, keeping those Roaches on high ground. And Bion senses it. Notice how he hasn't jumped up in a very long time. He knows something is up there waiting okay, for Okay, so this is really interesting. He's actually going to do a full-on counterattack. Mm. He's hidden the roaches inside of his base. Most Zergs are going to try to uh, struggle to just get drones down there, but it seems like Dark has given up on that. He now has Ravagers, and he's getting roaches and links behind this, which means he should be trying to counterattack across the map here, uh, as Dark, to some extent, has kind of given up on the uh, concept of any economy in this game. 
Yeah, look at this from Bjorn. He's really watching for the Roaches and Ravagers to come close. The Reapers have pretty low range, so he's throwing out the grenades. My god, he's so sick. Yeah, he's just it? he's trying to slow this down as much as possible so he can get other units out to actually hold on against this attack. He, like, delayed that so perfectly. Zerg, basically, they have to get there. It's a matter of seconds. If you don't get there quick enough, then Terran just holds it and you lose. But, I mean, he was really zoning that out watching. He should be doing it probably again here. So he's just making yeah. it impossible Ooh. to get forward. Oh, man. Pion just so hard to deal with throwing those grenades down. A bunch of Zerglings coming up. Oh, look at can't this. Can't quite get up yet. Just more and more grenades. And finally, Dark gets up that ramp, but he's taking a lot of damage. I don't think he can break him now. I no. think he actually just delayed the all in. I think you're I, right I, about that. Let's it, see. It's going to come down to Crosa Biles. Like, yeah. He just has to continually rain them down, kill SCDs, kill the bunker. But these Reapers just won't die. It really is going to come down to this attack. The Ravagers are now out. Uh, Dark is not making any more drones, so Terran is going to get the lead uh, unless Zerk can kill him right here, right now. Oh my god, here he goes. A ton of Corrosive Biles coming down. The SCVs have to move out of the way, and down goes that bunker. A great pickup by Dark. Continue to micro air. Grenades going down, but Dark starting to dodge everything. The Reaper grenade usage might be too good. The Dark is not able to get into position to use that artillery to break down the entrance here, but now Dark is shoving in, takes out that reactor. Does Beyond have enough? Up. He's using his SCVs here to defend as well. Hey, he gets a lot of those Reapers, so that's a lot of the annoyance gone. Dropping down Crosa Biles as he's running away, but it looks like Beyond is chasing him down. He's trying to get these kills. The Reapers come up with those grenades and a lot of damage going down on the Ravagers. He's coming forward. He's taking the Ravagers out. I don't know what Dark has in store next. Beyond has countered the all in. But wait, there's some more links coming in here now. He does lock out about half of them. That's going to be it. <laughs> GG! Oh my god. You see that head shake from Dark? That is the most frustrating thing in the world to play against. And the thing is, only one man can do it. The one-man army of Beyond. That micro out of control, beating back Roachling Ravager with nothing but Reaper micro. Just madness, Tasteless. Dude, the, the grenade usage was giving me chills. That was like so perfectly handled. He deleted yeah. so much. The, the, by the time the rush got there, I mean, I know Dark's very good and he's got great control, but I was looking at that and I'm thinking, I don't think he's actually oh going to be able to break this. That was the idea of what Dark was doing was good, but yet again, it's that control there by Beyond. He just chucked those grenades right in front of the Ravagers and Roaches, so they couldn't actually move forward. They get bounced back or, or take a lot of damage. And, you know, when Zerg does something like that, that's why you don't see a, nor a normal game go on after Zerg does a rush like that. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go back and make drones. It's mm. like, no, not at this level of play. You've already lost. But Beyond really knows how to use those Reapers. I wouldn't be surprised if he commits to more Reaper usage uh, throughout the rest of the series. That seems to be the Achilles heel here for Dark. Well, it, Beyond is just the best at that, so it's hard for Dark to even practice against someone who can use it at the same level. Yeah, it's not an orthodox uh, way of playing Terran, and it's it's kind of like trademark Beyond. Mm. And so I, I wonder how much experience Dark really has, uh, not just against the build, but against you know someone who controls it as well as Beyond does, because that definitely seemed to throw Dark off when he was trying to respond to what Bion was doing back there. Yeah, man, already a great finals in the game number four coming up here shortly. It's going to be on Apotheosis, our longest map in the pool. This map can be brutal. It should be a very long game here unless Bion decides to end it earlier. Dark does another all in. Guys, let's make some noise. Let's get hype. This is a 2016 StarCraft World Championship Series Grand Finals. Dark versus Beyond, game number four. In the upper left, in the blue, make some noise for Beyond. His opponent down in the bottom right, the best uh, Zerg player in the entire world. Make some noise for Dark! Dark, once again, delaying that expansion in favor of the quicker Zergling speed. What will Byun go for, though? Will he just go into a macro game and play the long game on this map? 
It's, it's hard to say. I mean, you're very far apart um, on this map. But one thing about this is that it's, it's a very narrow map. Mm -hmm. So um, Zerg can get a bunch of expansions up. But if we go into like the super late game, it's pretty tricky for Zerg to expand further because you're expanding towards the Terran. And as we all know, you kind of watch Terran try to push in and kill the Zerg constantly throughout the game. And the Zerg is usually deflecting it and trying to just get bigger uh, and better and eventually crush the Terran later on. So um, I'm curious to see how Dark will handle late game if we get to late game on this map. Yeah, you know, we don't see a whole lot of uh, Terran versus Zerg games here, but this is a best of seven. We get to see every map in the pool, you know, if it gets that far, if one of them doesn't kill each other. But with how these two are matching up so far, I couldn't even imagine this not going to at least game six or seven. Yeah, they seem to be quite evenly matched. I think that was really good handling there by Bjorn in um, our, our last game, but I don't think that we're going to have another game that looks like that with Dark losing to Bjorn in such a fashion, because that's definitely a very valuable game where you can get a lot of information about how Bion controls his units early on, and he's going to probably just try to play around that for this series. Right now, the Reaper just kind of scouting around, seeing if there's anything crazy on this side of the map. Is Dark trying to hide Zerglings or something like that? And, well, he's not really. He did get the fast speed, but just sitting here going into macro play. Dark, for the time being, just going to try to drone up as much as possible. That's what Zerg's always trying to do, unless they have some plan to end the game abruptly uh, as a surprise to their opponent. The game's really about just trying to have the right balance of enough drones to make money, but enough units to hold off. Just barely, not not uh, not like a win more move, but just barely hold off whatever Terran throws at him so that Zerg can tech up. And that's why Beyond with the Reapers is so scary, is because if you miscalculate, uh, the game will fall apart very quickly. Well, right now we have kind of an interesting opener here from uh, from Bjorn. He's continued to make Reapers off of one barracks after his expansion and is going for quite a fast armory with Hellions. I oh. mean, Hellbats incoming? Yeah, that, that's, that's curious. And with Dark taking the gold base, this makes for a, kind of a unique timing. Um, we may have some people that are not that familiar with StarCraft too. so important to note is that the gold bases really give you uh, a lot more minerals when you're mining from them. So when you see Zerg taking that, you kind of have to do something before they start to mine from that right away, or they're going to get a pretty substantial lead, and you'd have to be insanely good to beat them from there. Um, so the fact that he's taking this gold base now, and we see, I guess you're right, Artosis, maybe this Hellbat play, uh, this may be engineered to try to punish a Zerg player like Dark, who would take that gold base uh, at this phase of the game. Well, this makes it a tricky situation, especially if you're someone who likes Zerglings. If Bion just kind of goes into Stim, makes some bio units, then he suddenly has all of these Hellbats. Zerglings just get destroyed by the Hellbats. So that could be very tough for Dark to hold on against. He's going to need a lot of Queens or maybe some Roaches. All right, here come the Hellions now moving in. Uh, and it looks like he's getting some good angles here on these legs. He could come over here and try to take on these drones. Great amount of damage done right there. Yeah, dealing a ton of damage. The drone's starting to run as well. A grenade pushing the queens back, continuing to target down drones. Nine going down already. Ten now, and they get into the main base. Only a single queen up here right now. He's not finished yet. He's continuing to tear through. Too many workers are being gunned down. Thirteen now. Bite the dust as drones are being evacuated to the second base. Wow, Bion has done so much damage. 13 drones killed this early in the game is almost critical damage. Dark is in a lot of trouble. Bion brilliantly here. Oh, we're not even oh. done yet. 20 oh. drones now killed as Bion is just doing too much damage. Dark too greedy and Bion has completely outthought him at the start of this game. We were talking before this match about Reapers and how good he was with them. He shifted gears entirely, went into Hellions, and Dark was completely caught off guard because with Reapers, it's a lot about just having the right zoning uh, and control because Reapers die so fast. The Hellions, if you have enough of them, you can go around their army and just get yeah. in there and kill the workers. You need to, you know, recalibrate to something like that. It does not look like Dark did that this time around. No, he just wasn't ready for the number of Hellions or the angle that they came in from. So Dark now having lost 22 drones, he actually, look at that income advantage for Bion. Just crazy how much more he's mining right now. He's making his third command center as well, and he's not even done with the Hellion harassment. He's coming down now, uh, meanwhile making a lot of barracks behind us for a possible uh, counterattack. Now, when you kill that many workers, Zerg has to remake those workers. If they remade those workers, that was larvae that did not go into attacking units. So Dark is really on his back foot here. It's going to take masterful play to try to survive the next few minutes here from beyond. 
Okay, he's coming around the other angle where there's less creep, but now Dark does see it. He has to get into position. These four queens coming over to start poking the Hellions back. They do run away for the time being. It does seem like Dark is adjusting to this uh, new style of play here from Beyond. Beyond just goes ahead and sets up a command center <laughs> out here. I guess he can get away with that since the Hellions are really keeping the pressure uh, on the Zerg. There's not like really any way for Zerg to get out there and try to uh, stop that. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Beyond is basically setting up to have your standard Terran army here for a possible push while taking the money here from the gold base. I really like how Beyond's playing this so far, Artosis. Yeah, it's quite impressive. He's really shown a big range of strategies, just switching everything up. The last time he went Hellion, it was Hellion Banshee. The first time he went Reaper, it wasn't all in. And he keeps taking these builds he's already used and changing them slightly, getting far ahead of Dark in the process. Hellions now coming down on the right. Looks like Dark should be prepared. A scan here. You can see Dark trying to keep the Lings back, so hoping that uh, the Hellions might try to run through to get some more workers, but uh, he does see that and back up. 1-1 for infantry now finishing here for Bion. Uh, so what Bion did early on, he crippled Dark, and he's setting up for a big, strong push. And we see that it's already working by the supplies alone. It's 124 to 93. Uh, and that normally, you do not want to have a disparity like that if you're Zerg in, in this stage of the game. So this push from Beyond, and it looks like it's happening right now, is going to be very difficult for yeah. Dark to hold. Especially when he transforms them into Hellbats. These things are going to destroy the Zerglings of Dark. He does have Baneling speed on the way, and in fact, is setting up quite a few Banelings for some harassment, but he's going to need everything he has to hold on against this push. He's coming in here now. Is Dark prepared? He have to control perfectly here. The Hellbats in the front to tank for the damage. The Marines in the back to deal the damage. Dark moving it now. Oh, the Banelings get some decent connections there. The Zerglings coming in now. Only a couple of Hellbats left over, and they're going to be oh! dealt with. Oh! The counter harassment starting to get some SCVs, but Bion tries to protect as much as he can. The Queens of Dark being picked off by Bion's Marines as well. Dark had a great counter attack, but does he have enough to defend this attack? Dark coming in now, but Bion microing so well. Yeah, looks like Bion will continue this push forward. Dark in a lot of trouble. His gold base, this most important base, is going to start to get shelled, but he does have a lot of Zerglings coming out. Banelings morphing as well. Bion continues to push forward with his superior micro. As you can see, he picks up, he does the damage, but a second and scarier push is on the way here. Dark needs to hang on if he's going to win this game. Bion, with these incredible pushes coming down, it's going to be a tough game here for Dark. He's still behind in supply. Oh, it's really tough indeed. And with 2-2 on the way, way ahead for Bion, when he hits that 2-2 advantage, he is going to have even better fights than what we've seen so far. Dark needs to pull something big off, maybe a giant Baneling connection. Maybe we can see him do some more harassment, kill a bunch he's, of SCVs, but it has to be soon. He's doing a counter right now. Dark is actually heading up over here, but it looks like Bion already ready to defend now. Uh, and Bion is, it looks like he's gonna go for a drop now. Actually oh. headed southbound over here. Does Bion have enough to defend here? The links are coming in. Wow, even dropping off a couple Marines to eat the Baneling hits, but he will have to evacuate. The Queen's coming over, trying to take out these medevacs. Bion might have lost this army now with this move. It's possible Bion may be overextending here. If he starts to lose too many units, it's gonna allow Dark to stabilize. Yeah, it looks like everything will be going down except one medevac picks up some marines. Maybe going to try to harass a bit more with that, but as you said, Dark is starting to stabilize. The Lings are coming up now, taking out these marines here. I got to say, Dark is... We do not see Zerg's hold on like this. This is very, very impressive stuff. Uh, Bion has been up in supply this entire time, and Dark has managed to keep him at bay. Um, and I'm getting worried if Bion continues to overextend here, he may end up losing too many units, and Bion can actually uh, end up getting completely crushed in a counterattack. Yeah, it could still turn around. Dark has a good solid number of bases. His drone count isn't the best, but he has a gold base, so it's still all right. Exactly. I mean, there are things for Dark that are that are going well for him. Now, will this Ling counter be able to do anything? Uh, Bion is ready instantly. Burrows looks widow mines, and he has to run. Meanwhile, down here in the bottom left, Yun is tearing through. He's got a good position. Are there enough links and bay links to hold off this attack? Beyond micro backwards, Widow Mines going up, and it looks like Bion will be able to take this base. Oh, that split was just magnificent from Bion, and he continues to push forward, takes down the fourth base of Dark. Dark coming in with more Zerglings, but everything being picked off. G G. Oh, 
man. Beyond just so strong. Unstoppable so far when he gets into a position he likes in the mid game. Very nicely done back there uh, by Beyond. It's that control again. He's just too good. Uh, but not just the control. He actually set that up at the start really, really well. Yeah. He set those Hellions out there. It's not what we normally see in the meta here for uh, Legacy of the Void. Uh, he got those Hellions in there. He killed so many drones. I think Beyond would have had a, a, a much more even game had he not lost all those workers at the start. And that is Beyond really prepared for a long series because he sets it up in such a way that everybody, including you and I, are talking about Reapers. We're all thinking about Reapers. Dark's ready for Reapers. And all of it. then these Hellions come in, and he's just not prepared for it. No, uh, that was a devastating move indeed from Byun. So Dark, he just has to seal up all the little cracks. If he takes too much damage early on, he's in trouble. If he stops all the damage early on like he did on New Gettysburg, he can get into that macro game and maybe have an advantage and take it down. But Byun's early game, Byun's mid game, they're just too strong. Yeah, if Dark can get into the place in the game that he wants to get to, I think he'll be fine. But Byun is completely set up his strat so that you will never get there um, if you're against him. Uh, we're gonna have to see the very, very best here of Dark as we are now going into game number five. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get hype. Let's make some noise. This is the 2016 StarCraft World Championship Series Grand Finals. Dark versus Beyond, game number five. In the bottom right, in the blue, Give it up for Beyond! And his opponent in the red, he needs to turn this series around. He is Dark! From here on out, it's match point. Bion at any time could become the world champion. But Dark absolutely will not be happy with going down one to four. We will be seeing his absolute best play here in game number five on King Sejong Station. This is the map we've seen a lot of here um, throughout StarCraft II's history. We've had tons of different games on it in the different iterations of StarCraft. So. Um, there's a lot of different ways these guys can play. This is probably one of the most understood maps in StarCraft yeah. II history, if not the most. So, um, a great way uh, for us to go into this series. Let's see what kind of unit comp Byun is going to be picking here. Is he going to be going for um, the Reaper play? Is he going to go for, uh, you know, super aggressive? Oh, well, I guess it's being answered for me right now. As the command <laughs> center goes down, he gets the one Reaper out here for pressure. Uh, so this is very middle of the road, Byun. Yeah, it is. And I, I do wonder, oh, the second barracks just started after the oh, command center. Me. Okay. So this looks like we might finally see the build that maybe Byun is best known for, the double medevac stim timing attack. It's a really, really strong uh, opener where Byun just, he pushes back your creep immediately. And if you miss micro one time, if you over drone at all, he might kill your third base. Yeah, and it's kind of cool to see that Byun did not pick this build to use early on in yeah. the series. He had a bunch of uh, builds you can only use once or twice in a series to throw out here, and now he's bringing out his Beyond bread and butter Terran build. And we've seen a lot of Zergs just get crushed, like straight up. Yeah. This comes out, uh, not because of, of how genius the strategy is, but of how well he executes yeah. it when he does it. His control is the best in the world. Well, that is what we are going to be seeing here out of Byun, most likely. So, excited for uh, Dark to be able to try to counter that. I'm sure he came into this series with a very solid plan on how to stop Byun from doing a ton of damage with this opener because he is so well known for it. Well, I know that Dark has definitely studied this build. Mm -hmm. He's definitely familiar with this because Byun is uh, obviously just now winning a GSL Code S. All of his games are out there. You know, people, uh, when they want to study Terran or study how to play against Terran, they're going to be looking at Beyond's game. So I'm curious, assuming that Dark does figure out what Beyond is up to, how he responds to this. Dark is the best Zerk player in the whole world. Surely he should have the best answer for us. They're trying to learn about StarCraft.
Yeah, that is a fact right there. Now, look at how Dark is going about this. He's taking down these back rocks right now. He wants to have a lot of movement around. Sometimes Terrans do siege tank pushes over there, so he wants to uh, avoid that. He's taking his third base, continuing to drone up, and now his Overlord sees exactly what it is. With what he saw there, he knows completely what Byun is doing. The Dark is the best reactionary player in the world, and that's what Zerg is all about. So we're going to see how he makes these minor adjustments to try to either deflect or completely shut down this push that's going to be coming out. And what's great for uh, Byun here is there's a lot of ways as well for him to play this out from here. Oh, right? yeah. You, you kind of push out, you gauge where the Zerg's at. Is the Zerg overreacting, unreacting? Did he do it just right? And then you uh, decide when you want to expand, how you want to tech up. Do you have a follow-up timing? So there's a lot to this. Well, uh, it looks like we have plenty of queens right now for Dark. Those are going to be really helpful at pushing back the medevacs. He already has that Zergling speed, so that's important. But he doesn't want to make his Zerglings until the last possible moment. Also throwing down two evolution chambers, trying to get the heads up on those upgrades. He's coming out now. This is the timing with this push. Remember, Beyond's control better than anything you have seen here. It, it lines right up with Stim here. Stim about nine seconds away from completing. Dark should know where the push is coming out here. He might try to go ahead and get the uh, medevac. If you can bruise that medevac early on, maybe later on you could shoot it out of the sky with their, when there are still Marines inside of it. That's it. exactly what he's looking to do now. Nice scan from Beyond. He wants to push this creep back so that the Queens don't have mobility. They need to be on creep where they just move too slowly. So very well done. Pushing that back comes up, destroys yet another tumor as well. We see the Queen staying back. Now, this is shows you how patient of a player Dark really is. He's always staying back. Uh, you don't want to attack the Terran until the last possible second, because Zerg is just mustering up more and more and more forces to try to take this on. It also puts a timer here on Terran. Terran has to decide, do I keep pushing forward, or is it time to pull out? Because a Terran that stays in there too long or overextends is going to lose his army and probably lose the game. Okay, perfect hold so far by Dark, but Byun is not done. He's making two siege tanks, more marines, more medevacs, getting combat shields in plus one. And I mean, there's no way that he can die right now. There's no real way he can take damage other than miss microing while attacking Dark. So he's in a good spot still, even though it didn't really do any damage to Dark. And that's why this build is actually so good, is that it allows you to come out here and poke and actually do a lot of damage potentially. Um, or you can uh, you can go back and play a very safe game as well as just doing drops. Uh, it's very flexible as a build. He's gonna be coming out here now. Now this is the second phase where he has uh, some tanks with this and try to see if he can't shave off some queens or lings here. Any shots those tanks get off are big. And again, this right here is exactly where those rocks were taken out early. Dark is prepared for this. He knew this was likely gonna be the second step of this push. Okay, he can begin to leapfrog the tanks if he wants but he's got to be careful. He's right on the edge of that creep. Looks like the Lings and Baylings are coming down here now. The Queens will come in to try to target down the Medivacs. It looks like Bion is overextended. It's dark. It's gobbling up the forces of Bion. Oh, but the targeting on those Banelings is amazing. Every Baneling goes down, and he, somehow he keeps the bulk like, of his army that's alive. That's for you. That's Bion. I think any other Terran would have lost so much there, but he just targets each individual Baneling down so well. And this really highlights the problem that most players have against a player like this. He wins a lot of battles that sometimes it feels like he maybe shouldn't win. Yeah. He's hitting before Baneling speed. He's cleared out the creep so nothing can connect. Bjana is so strong here. But Dark, he's got his three bases. He's got good creep spread on the other side and is trying to do a little counterattack here with some Zerglings. But Bjorn sees it and his wall goes up. Bjorn is just bouncing these counterattacks off of him. Meanwhile, the push from Bjorn uh, still coming up here. Dark is going to have to scramble to try to hold this position. If Dark loses his base, there's a high chance he could lose this game. Oh, still micro in back so well. The siege tanks get taken out. That's a big deal here for Dark, but he has to get back on the creep. But again, Bion just does not lose his Marines. He's so good at controlling these units and eking out so much. The third base now going down here for Bion. In the bottom center, the Lynx uh, may try to come down here and deny that if they can. As far as supplies go, they're basically tied right now, although Dark seems to be uh, beginning to boost that back up but I don't believe that Bion's going to be stopping with these pushes anytime soon, Artosis. No, he is going to continue non-stop. He's got a lot of medevacs and a lot of Marines. And right now, with Dark taking that fourth base, there's quite a few spots that he can go and try to get some damage done. 
All right, looks like the third base is stabilized down here. Meanwhile, Dark taking the fourth in the upper right. There is a chance that Bien will begin to split his armies up here and start dropping in multiple locations, hoping that Dark can't handle the multitasking. Here comes the first drop over here, but it's oh! really... Oh! Great catch by Dark. That's a huge deal. But here comes some Liberators and the rest of the Marines of Byun. The Queens are all out of position and can't deal with this. A lot of the Banelings getting sniped, but they do have speed rolling through right now. Going at the base. Oh, good pick up there at the last second. A brilliant play. However, it does seem that we're at the point in time where Dark is just beginning to have yeah. enough. He can shut down every kind of attack, and that may mean that Bion is going to have to play a very different game. Yeah, it's starting to get into that late game. Already the infestation pit down, the hive on the way. Dark is going towards those crucial ultralisks he wants to get, and he hasn't really lost that many drones this game. That's super important for him. Bion? Is he going to stay too aggressive like we saw on uh, New Gettysburg? Or it it, it is possible. It it, it's very possible. Now, it, it, just similar to the New Gettysburg game, we see Bjorn is actually stuck on three bases, and it's yeah. been like that for a while. Where uh, Dark is here on four and will probably be taking a fifth here momentarily, but that means he's going to be pretty big and tough to take on. It, it's so true. You know, you want to be the aggressive player. You want to be in dark space. There is the downside to it. If you get into the longer game, it's going to be hard to keep up with his production. Sure, their supplies are similar right now, but uh, Bion doesn't really have the infrastructure to go into mass liberators or get into mass ghosts very easily. And as Dark's tech gets more and more sophisticated, it's going to be easier and easier to shut down each of Bion's pushes. All right, Bion trying to get something done up near that fourth base. A ton of Zerglings up here just forcing him to pick up. Meanwhile, the rest of Bion's army circling around towards that natural. Once again, oh, that is a lot of Widow Mines, Tasteless. All right, he's coming down now. The Banelings attempting to connect with Bion as such a good spread. He's gunning the links down one by one. Dark seems to be miscontrolling. More Banelings spill down. Can Bion control well enough? Uh, it looks like Bion gets away with a decent amount of units, but these Widow Mines certainly did a lot of work. Meanwhile, oh! Liberators all over the place. Dark pulls most of the drones, not taking too much damage, but still slowing down his mining quite a bit. My God, Bion is everywhere right now. Dark is having to try to deflect each of these individual attacks. Meanwhile, Dark now going up to the Ultralisk Cavern. That when he gets that tech, if he can get that tech in time, it's going to be much easier to try to hold off these forces that are pushing his expansions. Oh, those Widow Mines being rearmed, dealing more and more damage. This area has been a headache for Dark. At least he's defending ending up in the top right near his fourth base, but the Liberators continuing to harass while the bulk of Dark's army is trying to defend his natural. Still very even supplies. Note the expansion location here for Bion is very close to the pushing location here for um, uh, for Dark. He, want, he wants to take this base and defend it while still, still continuing to push. That's usually a good indicator that he's not going to stop pushing for a little while here. Yeah, you get to rally through, kind of protect it through aggression. Bion continuing to try to get something done with those Liberators. Here we go, setting up Liberators. The Speed Bailings coming in, trying to knock out Bion's army, but Bion with some nice splitting in the back. He's continuing to push forward. It is critical that Bion takes out this fourth base. Dark has to hang on. The Ultra Tech is now out. We do have Ultralists on the way. Bion is going to try to abuse the architecture of the map. Will he be able to do it? Or does Dark have too much? Dark rolling forward with so many Banelings and Zerglings trying to kill off everything that Bion has here. Those high ground Marines being nothing more than an annoyance. And Dark continues to hold on with Ultralisks about to hatch. We have the fourth base now up for, uh, oh, excuse me, almost up here for Bion. He's going to try to hold this position, but that may be a very good location for Dark to try his own counterattack. It's a very short distance to travel. And now we see uh, the Zerg army is getting higher and higher here in supply, uh, still matched by the Terrans. It looks like the center left, though, may be the focal mm. point for another push. If you notice with Bion, he tends to send in one medevac or one liberator set up, draw the screen away, and then begin a big push yeah. somewhere else on the map. And it looks like we're having that happen right here, right now. He's trying to draw Dark's attention somewhere else. The Queen's already there to take it down, though. This push from Bion, can it get the fifth base location? This fifth base is important. Dark is mining out of his first couple of bases. So if he doesn't get more resources, he can't keep up his ultralist production. Meanwhile, another attack over here in the north. We have Bion pushing up. He is doing a very good job of deciding uh, when to call, uh, pull back over here. Another attack down here by Dark. 
uh, over in the center. It doesn't seem that Byun uh, has enough. No medevacs here, but Dark being cautious, knowing he's miscontrolled against Byun before, decides to back up. Yeah, he wants to get right back on that creep, and now the Ultralisks are out. The army of Dark is going to continue to get stronger and stronger, and if Byun stays too far forward on the map, this might turn out exactly like New Gettysburg, his only loss so far in the finals. Here come the Ultras, and the Lynx coming down now, but does Byun have too much? The Lynx and Ultras are spilling forward. If they break this location, they'll have access to the fourth base of Byun. Wow, those Widow Mines getting huge hits, and some great micro from Byun on top of the ramp, forcing Dark back. Byun holds on to his fourth. Byun, his control, man. <laughs> He's just so good. Uh, he keeps... Uh deflecting every attack that Dark has. And we haven't had a moment in this game, for instance, where Dark has really been in there doing damage and Beyond lost some mm. position on the map. I, I have to say it, he's a literal god, Tasteless. Yeah. <laughs> we have the um, the command centers continuing um, to just try to be mined from. Uh, excuse me, these bases try to be mined from. Uh, keep in mind that we will not have Beyond take a fifth base easily here. So he's kind of stuck on four. If he gets a fifth base, that's going to be really, really tough. Mm -hmm. uh, Dark at the same time also has the same problem this map is getting pretty congested we're really running out of expansions we're running out of opportunities for these guys so uh pretty soon here the next few battles are going to be the big decider as you know someone's going to run out of locations to take you're certainly right about that and you know so far i like where dark is at he's trying to get into corruptors right now with that spire to help against the mass liberators but there are quite a few Liberators being made four at a time right now for, for Byun, and Liberators just crush Ultralisks. So if he can set those up and defend them with his Bio, with his Widow Mines, he can push into that fifth base location. He's definitely booby-trapped this part of the map, so it would be very undesirable for Zerg to try to move through uh, that location over there. Uh, you can see also Dark checking in the bottom left to just make sure there's no expansions there or in the center right. Uh, is Byun going to move out right now? Both players are maxing out, meaning they can't be making any more units. All right, the Liberators starting to get set up. If you can target down those Ultralists, it's going to be huge for him. Catches a lot of Banelings morphing in. Really well done there by uh, by Byun. That could have done a lot of damage to his economy. It looks like Byun's going to set up two attacks. A small one over here in the upper right and a large one in the center left. He's scanning, trying to survey a good position that he's got over here. Uh, will Dark be able to counter this? Keep in mind, Dark can't change his unit composition because he is maxed out. So he has to fight this off, and if it's not the right comp, remake the proper one when this comes down, whereas Bion, a very balanced army composition. Yeah, he certainly has that, but the Vipers are charging up. They're going to come over and start with their abducts. Dark trying to slow down this push. Those Liberation Rings are coming closer and closer. All right, he's so close. It's going to be so important that Dark manages to hang on. We see the Ultras coming in here. The Liberators beat Harpoon back. The main link spill forward, but it seems that Byun manages to hold this position. Dark comes in with a flank from the other side as well. The Ultras coming back forward. Lots of transfusions going down, but the Ultras starting to get shredded a bit. One Ultra up near his other base, but Byun still holding on. A fantastic job so far. Byun holds off with just a very little bit, although both players' armies have been massively diminished. 126 supply to 137. Such a close game at this moment. Dark lost almost all of his expensive units. Byun holding on with a lot of red bio here. He doesn't have a lot of medevacs to heal them up, and even less as the Corruptors pick some off. Beyond everything in his army so bruised, but he's keeping it alive. As long as it's alive, it continues to do damage. He's pushing Dark back. Dark in some trouble here. Beyond trying to go for the throat. Some ultras being made. A lot of Zerglings and Banelings as well. He's got to hold on to this base, but you know what? He took a sixth in the middle as well. That's right. While this action was going on, the center expansion for Zerg has been acquired. Meanwhile, it looks like Beyond is going to try to take the bottom left. But this is the, the center point of this game here on this map right now. Uh, he needs to try to take this out. Dark has to eliminate this army, or that is eventually going to be pushed and taken out. Lings and Banelings push everything back. Meanwhile, the Corruptor is trying to take down any Liberators that they can, picking some of them off. Some of them standing and fighting against the Corruptors. Not a good match for the Liberators here, but Byun microing his heart out. A game of tug of war here in the center of the map as they try to crush each other's forces. Uh, there may be an opportunity down here in the bottom left if Dark can muster up enough Zerg units to try to attack that down there. Uh, if we can do a mineral check right now on the Terran bases, I'm, I'm curious. There's nothing left here. 
not basically nothing left here. That's fine, but then in the top, uh, or in the middle there. Okay, so it's that base so it's getting low, and um, it, it, Terran have a harder time expanding out further and further. So uh, definitely keep in mind if Dark just continues to hang on, he could end up winning this just because everything will have dried up here for Beyond. Yeah. That definitely could be how this goes down. Now, starting to attack in on that planetary, that would be a bad idea. Getting a little bit overconfident right now with his army. The SCV. Bravest SCV. <laughs> oh, rip. But uh, you know what? If he can go down and take out this base, Bion's economy is going to shrink massively. That's right. But if he overextends, Bion will get that counterattack. Uh, we see him now stepping forward, taking out all these bailings before they can finish hatching. Dark trying to come back and drive these forces back, but when they go under the Liberators, so much damage dished out. Will these bailings manage to connect with these Marines? Oh, Dark is trying his best right now to catch up with the bailings, but Bion just continues kiting back. Look at this spread, I can't believe it! He takes almost no damage from those bailings. The SCVs have been taken out here at this expansion. Beyond scrambling to reclaim uh, this, what is soon to be the only expansion available here on this map for him. You know, that might have been a mistake for Dark. That probably would have killed any other Terran in the world. But Bion holds on tight, keeps this command center alive, and will continue to mine from his fifth base. Dark is really going untouched at his own bases. The only other expansion that hasn't been acquired on the map is the center right, but that one is a very, very difficult one for Bion to take in this uh, phase in the game. So we, he's really gonna have to kind of rely uh, on this bottom left base, these bruised units. Again, their supplies throughout this entire game have almost always been exactly the same. Now, so it, the it, fights have been super even. Throughout this series, almost. Just, I mean, these guys are a perfect match for a BlizzCon WCS Finals. We see a brilliant counterattack here, taking out these workers. This is huge. Beyond now down to 34 workers total, to the 73 workers here of Dark. Meanwhile, Beyond pushing in over here. He's trying to take this base out here at the center left. Dark has to evacuate. He knows he can't hold on to that base right now, so down it will go. But the damage he's done is massive as well. Looks like he wants to come down, see if he can save that at all. And, oh, he's actually drawn this army up near the planetary. Very good, knowing Dark is not even looking at it. However, Beyond's army is pretty scary. Beyond may not need resources if he can push all the way across the map and take out these remaining bases. Dark has a lot of drones at that middle base. If he can take that out, it's a giant deal. The Liberation Zone's getting up, but the Corruptor's coming in from the other side, taking out the Liberators, and a lot of Lings and Ultras charging forward. But Beyond's control is just too good. Ultras alone are not good. They need Lings to back them up. Beyond may continue to push forward at this very important expansion here in the center of the map for Zerg. Oh man, this is so crazy, so close. Beyond is being more aggressive than I've ever seen a Terran against this many Ultralists, but somehow, someway, he's making it work. Dark trying to hold on, pushing forward. Once again, the Corruptor's picking off some valuable air units. He's getting close. He's almost in range of the hatchery. The bottom left base has been reclaimed by Beyond, so Beyond can continue to mine. He was pretty much dried up for a little bit, unless that counterattack is over there with those oh! links. Big connection by a Baneling there. When you get this low, the Banelings can wipe out your army in less than a second. Another good hit goes off, but he can't go down that ramp. There's Liberators and Widow Mines waiting. This is all Beyond has, really, is this army. He just needs to get this base. Dark has to control perfectly. Beyond can't mine at the bottom left. It's all going to come down to this one force. Oh, he's trying to target down that hatchery, but still Dark holding on tight. He runs into the middle, Widow Mines through the Liberators, trying to go in the off this Ultralis, going to town. He's still got these Marauders here, but has Dark managed to hang on for long enough? It's now 65 drones to 13 oh. SCVs. Dark may have weathered the storm. GG! Wow, wow, that was the most magnificent set of holds by Dark. And it went exactly as you were talking about, Tasteless. He held on, held on, held on, and eventually, Beyond just didn't have any resources left to try to finish him off. Beautiful play there by Dark. He still has a chance here. Beyond was in his face for that entire series. But Dark was the patient one. Eventually, Bion overextended. Bion could have gone back and tried to keep that last base alive at the bottom uh, left, and the game would have gone on. But he decided to come in there and do uh, the damage 
um, to that center base and beyond, you know, having managed to last that long, actually became the victor. So now he's got two wins. Yeah, it's two against three right now, which means map number six. It's going to be Frost. It's a big map. It's a four-player map. And, you know, depending on where they spawn, this really could be advantageous either way. Yeah, we saw Bjorn, by the way, do that really standard build that we've seen him do a lot, for instance, in GSLs and other tournaments where he gets those two medevacs uh, with the Marines out, pushes out, and he kind of tests the water. He wants to see, um, you know, can I harass him here? Do I push? Do I just go back? And Dark handled it really well, so maybe we're going to see Bjorn do uh, some more untraditional builds. That's how he was beating him before. Yeah, you know, I guess that it's a little bit predictable he would use that build, and Dark was super prepared, so not sure that he's going to want to pull that out again here on Frost. We're going to go to a short break. When we come back, we'll continue with the StarCraft II World Finals. The 2016 World Championship Series Global Finals is brought to you by Intel, T-Mobile, NVIDIA, and Republic of Gamers. Welcome to BlizzCon! This is one of the coolest things you're ever going to see in your life. For Azeroth! We invented some brand new characters. When we first did BlizzCon back in 2005, we had no idea what to expect. Are we ready to begin the costume contest? It's so much more than a game in a box. Have a great BlizzCon! breaks all the rules. Rated T for Teen. Ah, Gadget Sand, the city of opportunity. <laughs> Welcome to the big time, pal. the full animated short at play. We are back here at the 2016 StarCraft World Champion Series Grand Finals. This is Dark versus Beyond. We are going into game six. Beyond with a 3-2 lead. Man, Beyond is on fire, but Dark is showing he is of the same exact level. Holding on against play that I really honestly think no other Zerg would have a chance against. Yeah, Dark stays patient and eventually Byun does run out of gas, but we'll see what Byun wants to do this time. Byun has really been uh, dictating what builds are going to impact this game each time around here. Uh, he's had a lot of success with the super aggressive Reaper builds, yeah. with the unorthodox Hellion play. Dark did have one game where we saw Bion go for Reapers, and he tried to do a counter all in, and Bion just completely <laughs> shut it down. Yeah. It seems like when Bion plays more standard against Dark, Bion doesn't see the same results he wants. No, you know what? If Bion doesn't get a little bit of damage early game, if he doesn't get into a very healthy mid game, that is where Dark really starts to to feel himself out, to get ahead, to play the game that he wants to play. Right. I think that's going to be the same going forward. If Dark can perfectly deflect the harassment of Bion early on, he's going to get up into the Ultralist tech, and he's going to give Bion a real run for his money. Yeah, he really stabilizes when he gets to that Ultralist tech, which may uh, be a tell to Bion. You need to do something much more aggressive early on. Don't even let Dark get into the phase of the game where he is the healthiest. Uh, well, our next map, as mentioned previously, it's going to be Frost, a big four-player map. Depending on spawns, the game can go a lot of ways. It could be fast and down and dirty, or it could be a long macro game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is game number six. Loading up right now, Dark versus Beyond. 
a battle to become the 2016 BlizzCon StarCraft II World Champion! In the upper left, he's one win away from being the victor in the blue. Make some noise for Beyond! And his opponent, the Zerk player in the red, he needs to win this game and the next. Give it up for Dark! Match point once again for Byun. And they're both on the top of the map, so that might be a little bit better for Byun overall, but definitely not something that uh, Dark is going to be too, too scared of. He knows how to hold on in these positions. Well, uh, I can't say I'm surprised to see Byun doing this. <laughs> I, I think that, um, you know, just like we've all been watching or you and I have been casting, I think we see what's worked for Beyond so far. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's got to do whatever he thinks is the absolute best in order to engineer the victory here. Because we do have comebacks happen when a series can be this long. And you definitely need to stick to what you know, not try to get too fancy. Because um, when you're in game six in a, in a you know, uh, a series that's going to go this long, you need to be, by now, completely prepared for everything. Now you have enough data on your opponent, it's about responding perfectly. Well, it looks like it's going to be a double Rax Reaper again, as opposed to a three Barracks Reaper. Oh, no, he starts another Barracks, so it is going to be three Rax Reaper. Beyond did fantastically with this on Frozen Temple. Well, it's, His Reaper Micro is awesome. It's funny, because Dark did not seem... Uh, I guess he thought he knew what to do, but then when he tried to do that counter all in, it was completely shut mm. down. So um, I, I don't blame Bion at all for doing this. I think this is a very wise decision. Let's see how Dark responds, because I do not think he can do what we saw in that previous game that ended immediately with the good Reaper micro uh, zoning out the Ravagers and Roaches. Well, the Overlord actually sees one of the barracks, but it doesn't see all three yet. The timing of the barracks is a little bit bizarre, so he definitely has to be thinking to himself, what exactly am I playing against? And, you know, can he hold on against this? I mean, if Byun is going for a victory for a world championship off the back of this build right now, but if Dark can hold on with what he learned in the Frozen Temple game, maybe he can make this into a macro game once again. Beautiful control there, making a sport crawler right before that drone is taken out. Just buying a little bit more time here. Any units he can shape up like that Zergling we saw back there is going to be a little victory that can stack up to a big lead later on here. Um, Dark, of course, we're now going to learn what his alternative route is for countering a style of play like this. Link speed almost done. When the link speed is done, it's a lot easier for these, li these links to actually combat uh, all of these Reapers. All right, gets a drone right there, getting some of these Zerglings as well. He's just kind of trading Zerglings for time right now, bringing the Queens up as well. The Creep has now connected both the bases so the Queens can move a lot more freely to defend as well. Okay, the um, mines are coming up here. The Reapers are basically rotating back and forth. He's delaying the Queens from actually uh, having any utility in the uh, economic aspect of this matchup right now and keeping the links back here. He's trying to slow down drones. And if Zerg overextends here, uh, Zerg is going to lose a lot. And that puts Bion in a really good spot, whereas Bion's already expanding behind this. Oh, trying to get that kill, but Bion pulls it away. A very low Reaper for health. That's one Zergling hit off of death. The Queens still have reasonable health, but they've had to transfuse some, so they don't have a lot of energy. More Lings spilling out now. Now, you got to be careful when you have this many Reapers, because if you uh, overextend and the Lings have speed, they just run out and surround you and everything dies. So uh, you're going to stay back for the time being. Remember, if Dark loses one game here, that's it. So he's hanging on for dear life. Uh, his life is on the line right now, and some great grenades from those Reapers end up killing a Queen. Dark still in some trouble, trying to get the creep a little bit further out. Grenades being thrown down, zoning everything back as he pushes down towards this drone line. Oh, he's coming in. He's trying oh. to get a surround. Will it work? The grenades force the Reapers to scatter everywhere. Link's still coming up. Dark does shave off some of those Reapers, but not without losing a good amount. Look at that. Actually, excuse me, two Reapers to 60 Links, two Queens, and a drone so far. It's crazy that he's only gotten two Reapers. These Link surrounds have been awesome, but the grenades of Yun are second to none. And he's continuing to push him back here. Now, behind this, uh, it does seem that Dark is just continuing to drone up, whereas Bion has got a pretty healthy economy, and that's why this style of play is actually so scary and so difficult. 
to uh, to hold off is because he gets in your face, but, but uh, while that's all going on, he's teching up and he's still got an expansion. Zerk doesn't even get to counterattack when you do this because if he sent any units to counterattack, the Reapers would run you over anyway. Yeah. Everything is looking good for him, but a link flank coming up from Dark. The Reapers jump up after some grenades and somehow, once again, He's keeping those Reapers alive. Now, no, Dark is getting uh, melee and armor upgrades here behind this. Uh, Stim, by the way, almost done here for Bjorn. I don't believe he has a ton of Marines just yet, um, but he will have a follow-up push coming up here. Okay, a decent amount of Marines. Um, let's see how Dark handles this, because Dark is now taking his third base uh, out. And these starting locations, you know, the top left and the upper right, um, it's... It's not far from each other. No. It, it's not hard for Terran to push over to that location. Ideally, Zergs want to be cross spots or just be expanding farther away from their opponent instead of getting closer and closer. Yeah, this is a very tough situation. Uh, the economy of Byun is just better. He has more workers. He has the Terran mules on top of that. His production is fantastic right now with double reactor barracks. He's already up into stim finishing 10 seconds from now. And even medevacs are on the way. This is looking great for Bjorn. Bjorn is getting ready to push out here. Stim has completed the Terran player with the best control in the world. Dark needs to hang on already. Bjorn with a supply lead. Note the Reapers come into the front. Oh, ambush out here. Tries to get us around. The Marines come in here at the last second to deny it. Uh, but that was really smart what we saw there from Bjorn. He moved out with the Reapers in the front so he, the Marines wouldn't yeah. be shown. Then he wanted to set up the ambush right then and there. But Dark already uh, ready for a trap with him there. Can Dark hold on though right now? This attack is massive from Byun, stimming forward. See what he can get done. Ling's trying to come in from the side. The Banelings hatch. They're moving forward. The grenades actually push them back. Finally, the Reapers go down, but these Marines still have to be dealt with. He's stimming forward now. So many Queens with transfuses. He may try to come around with these Links and the Banelink from the side. Remember, those medevacs don't have unlimited energy, so the more they heal, uh, the less they can later on. Uh, and that's one of the game plans here for Dark is to try to drain those medevacs as much as possible until eventually they have to pick up and leave and Dark can go back to focusing on his economy. Uh, Dark really needs to get that economy going too because we see Bion taking his third base. That means that his economy is basically staying the same as Dark's the entire time, which is not what you want to have happen in a Zerg versus Terran. The Zerg just needs more economy. Okay, we see the Marines coming forward now. Dark barely hanging on. These Banelings, they need to get good connects. They need to get a surround here. Bion being very wise about when he pulls back. He is never overextending so far, at least in this game. Staying on top of that creep as well, keeping it as far back as is possible so that he's always threatening, killing that third base, killing a lot of drones as well. But now Bion realizes, okay, Dark has held on for a bit. It's time to start hitting multiple locations, not just a full frontal attack. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the, the time where you could just push in and win the game is over. So now he's going to force Dark to start juggling uh, and dividing his attention into different parts of the map. Now, Dark, uh, he's pretty good at handling that. And a lot of Terrans, when they try to do this, end up uh, uh, over -max, like uh, maxing out their ability to to um, to attack everywhere, and they end up losing drop ships, they end up losing armies, and eventually the Zerg just counterattacks. So it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of this game pans out. Well, right now, a lot of Zerglings are on the way, and no two two upgrades from Dark, which is kind of interesting. He might decide to get a little bit aggressive here, try to crush an army, or maybe even sneak in and kill a bunch of SCDs at that third base. My only concern is if he tries to sneak in and kill a bunch of workers, a lot of times Bjorn is so in the other in the Zerg's face that he just runs them over right after that. Because any other units that are not there to defend for Dark um, are, are enough for Bjorn to then you know, completely destroy whatever expansion he's close to. Bion pushing forward towards that third base once again. Dark, he does have that fourth hatchery up at the top, so that's good, but another easy place for Bion to attack. Not a lot of drones over there yet. In fact, some Marines might already be on the way. He's getting ready for that attack. So he's set up here. He's basically got the Zerg surrounded. It's going to be very tough for Dark to get out. We see the small group of links coming up here. Note he keeps some of these um, army units over here in the front. And then as the army, tr the uh, Zerg army rather, tries to come out and break it, he sends the rest of it up there to drive it back out. So this is a pretty insane contain here. But as Bion tries to be aggressive, he's shaving off bits of units here and there. We now have a drop headed over here into the upper right in the main. It doesn't appear there's anything here to defend. Dark is going to have to stamp that out. Yeah, luckily he has great creep spread so far between his bases 
Genesis. So very quickly, the Zerglings get up and force that drop back. But Bjorn is really spreading out. He has a drop down kind of at the bottom, waiting to do some damage at some point. He has that drop up at the top, waiting to fly in as soon as Dark's units move. And of course, the main army right in the center, putting that heavy pressure onto Dark. The supply count is 173 to 140. And Terran is pushing in here right through the center. He's got a good position. It's going to be up to Dark to try to wipe out this attack. Banelings rolling in already, trying to take out Widow Mines and anything at the front. A drop hitting two locations at once, the natural and the fourth base under attack. While that frontal push comes in, Bion is everywhere. Bion now attacking in. The Banelings are set up. One Hellbat doing damage to the workers. Dark is going to have to respond and respond quickly. Oh, he's drawing up all of his Zerglings and Banelings as quickly as he can. He has a lot of Queens here as well. The Marauders shelling everything at the front. That fourth base no longer mining. A lot of damage here from Bion. But the Banelings, they come in from behind, and it looks like he should be able to push everything back. Unbelievable. The main attack has been denied. But what about the drops in the main and the other expansions? Dark has to clean this up quickly. Although Dark is doing a great oh, job oh, of holding on, it does appear that Bion's army is still very huge. Another attack after this one could still end up wiping out Dark. Bion is everywhere still despite these miraculous holds from Dark. It feels like he's just being whittled down over time and Bion continues the onslaught. Look oh at this. my god, he's gonna oh. save that hatchery quickly. A good pickup, he does manage to get that out. Dark keeps the base over there. Uh, if that hatchery had been taken out, I think we could pretty much confirm that this game would be over. Uh, meanwhile, the drops are not stopping, man. This guy is everywhere. Don't forget, Bion has three bases and he hasn't taken any damage this game back at his own home. This is looking great for Bion as he rallies his other units across the map. Dark might be done for with this attack. Is this the killing blow or will Dark pull off a miracle? He is closing in. The army is getting set up. Widow Mines now being planted. Marines have been stinned. Liberators in the right position. Dark trying to get in with those circlings, but it is not going to be enough. Bjorn punches through, hits on his third base. G, G, Bjorn has done it. And with that, Bjorn is our 2016 WCS World Champion of StarCraft II. Give it up for Bjorn, your BlizzCon 2016 StarCraft World Champion! Bian, two months ago, you became a GSL champion, and now today, on this main stage, at the most important event of the year, you are the 2016 WCS champion. How much more does this win mean for you? Oh, he says, uh, in the semi-final interview, I told you guys that I'm not feeling too confident going, uh, going into the championship uh, finals against Dark. And I was telling the truth, I wasn't feeling my best. That being said, I think that mindset actually <laughs> 
that I think it actually helped me because I wasn't, uh, I just played my game, I just played as calm as I could. And I, I didn't expect the score to be like this 4 2, but I'm so, so happy right now. This moment today is the happiest and best moment of my StarCraft 2 career. Now obviously becoming the WCS champion is one thing, but to do so in such a dominant fa uh, fashion over such a strong opponent like Dark, it must, mean e uh, it must be even more satisfying for you. So please tell us. 일단 우승 우승하는 것도 너무 기쁘지만 정말 어려운 상대로 우승하는 것도 너무 대단한데 어, 그만큼 더 만족스러울 것 같은데 얘기해 주세요. 일단 박영우 선수 상대로 제가 저번 크로스 파이널에서 패배를 한 경험이 있거든요. 그래서 좀 주눅 들었는데 오늘 이렇게 3대1 상황까지 오니까 어, 내가 왜 이렇게 잘 내가 잘하는 건가 상대가 연, 연습을 별로 안한 건가 했는데 3대1 상황에서 한판 지니까 제가 메이저리그를 자주 보는데 이번에 그 월드 시즈리에서 3대1 상황에서 시카고 컵스가 세, 네 판, 아니 세판 새로 그 내리 따내면서 역전 우승을 했거든요. 그 세종과 학기지에서 지고 나서 혹시 나도 그렇게 되나? 그렇게 했는데 어, 프로스트에서 이겨서 다행인 것 같아요. So he says, first of all, obviously Ryong was a very, very strong opponent. I knew that going in. Uh, when the score became 3-1, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but in the World Series, the Chicago Cubs were in a similar situation. And they were able to come around. So I actually, once I lost on King Sejong Station, I got very worried that a similar situation would happen to me. But thank God that didn't happen and I was able to win here. And last but not least, Bjorn, you have won the hearts of so many people around the world, not just here in Anaheim cheering their hearts out for you, but also online. So please, a word for everyone that is cheering so hard for you. 일단 팬분들도 엄청 많이 잊고 또 많이 생겼어요. 그래서 그분들에게 한마디만 해주세요. 아, 일단 이렇게 엄청 너, 이렇게 많이 많이 너무 찾아오셔가지고 너무 감사하고 오, 그 뭐였지 응원을 진짜 너무 크게 해주시더라고요. 엄청 힘이 그러니까 선수들한테는 그게 엄청난 큰 힘이 되거든요. 오늘도 이렇게 창밖에 선, 팬분들 보면서 되게 힘냈고 또 제가 이렇게 아 네네 스트림 좀 많이 봐주세요. 스트림 스트림 시작할 건데 스트림 시작하고 하고 있거든요. 이렇게 우승했으니까 우승자 우승자가 스트림 한다는데 많이 와주셨으면 좋겠어요. Uh, so he says, first of all, thank you guys so much for coming up and showing up here in person and cheering so hard. And you guys don't understand, as a pro gamer, to feel you guys chanting so hard for me, this is the best feeling that a pro gamer can absolutely have. There were so many times times that I looked out from my booth window and I saw you guys cheering so hard for me and that meant so much to me. It gave me so much strength as I played my game. So thank you guys so much. And last but not least, he says, please watch my stream. I'm going to be streaming a lot more moving forward. And now that I am the WCS champion, please watch a champion stream. And there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016 WCS champion is Bjorn. What an absolute, what an absolute winner. There's really no other way to put it. He's been a fantastic contender, a wonderful display, not just in the finals, but throughout the tournament. A true champion up there. Best player won the biggest trophy, and you can feel his emotion out there. Like, it was a great finals, but the right guy won. He was the best player here by, by, lar by and large, and it was amazing, absolutely amazing. I loved it, Sean. I mean, I, I've been a fan of this guy for quite some time. Like so many other people, obviously, he's there, and he's amazing. The way he focuses Banelings down, it almost feels oh. like you're watching like Outer Maiden 2000 or something, and just focus fire every single Bane. Uh, I, I loved it. I'm really lost for words, because I thought some of these moments in these finals are just fantastic. That game on King Sejong, I mean, we could talk about all yes. the games, but can we just talk about King Sejong for like 45 minutes because I cannot believe what I saw Nate. It was godlike from both sides. It was so good. That That is as good as StarCraft 2 can be. The level of skill displayed, everything happening, being able to hear live to see all the choices that both players are making from their vision, watching Dark slowly fight his way back, bringing everything, getting those big engagements, taking the big risks with those pushes into the fourth base on the southwest.
through Liberators. It was such an intense, amazing series across, and I just want to make sure I take some time to say I feel so good for Bjorn as someone who's been following him, watching him stream. It is so cool to see someone who works this hard and cares this much about making it this far actually succeed. I, I can't help but think, you know, this day two years ago, Bjorn was gone. He wasn't in StarCraft anymore. He basically left the game to decide to come back to rekindle what he first started to build. And it's, it's, it's peaked at this very tournament. He's done it all. He's the world champion. He's the reigning GSL champion. To go from such a low to such a high in just a couple of months is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. I mean, but, but to be fair, he's got pedigree in the game. He's been here since the beginning. So yes, he took time off, but he knows what it takes and he put in the work. I mean, we were talking about that before this match even started. Of all the players back there, who was constantly playing? Who grabbed the one guy that beat him in this tournament and said, yo, I would like to practice with you because you were the person that found a weakness in me and used it against me. And all of a sudden he turns that around gets $200,000, we're gonna be talking about him for a long time, and it pays off. He has humility, he has emotion, he cares, he's funny, he's awesome, and he's the best StarCraft II player this year. Uh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, every single time you walk by that, even the other pros that all play an insane amount of StarCraft admire his work ethic. It's like, he's a practice machine. He sits there all day, every day, and I, I just once again want to say, you know, like we've been all watching StarCraft for pretty much since day one of the beta, six years long. You go to all the tournaments, we've seen a lot of amazing finals. I'm not going to say this is the best finals of all time, but some of the things I saw on these first person screens, I have never seen, Sean. It's a personal opinion, but I have never seen people play like the way that Dark and Bjorn were playing on the game of King Sejong. You're watching it on these first person screens, and I almost feel like I'm lightheaded after watching it. Like it's on real fast. It's, they make comebacks and we, we normally look at each other like, yeah, game is over, you know? Like, obviously, if you're casting, you don't say that, but you think that game is over. And, and they turn it around. It's, it was unreal cool to watch. Yeah, uh, very, very impressed. A complete spectacle to, to watch this finals here, Nathanius. And I know from, from your blue Terran heart that you are proud <laughs> of this man. Uh, any final thoughts here? We are very close to finishing up. What, and not, not just the finals or this tournament, but 2016 is, you know, started early in January where GSL season one begun, where we traveled to DreamHack Open Leipzig to here we are, the final tournament of the season of 2016. This year has been so interesting for so many different reasons in StarCraft. We came into this BlizzCon with, I think, probably the most variety in terms of players that we've ever had. And the games that we saw, even in that opening week that we just had up north, were amazing. And it really, I think we could walk away from this <laughs> feeling very good. Uh, I love seeing players like, like Bion, especially just just reaches out to me so much because we talk about all these systems, these team houses that these pl players practice in so normally. The, the usual champions, and Bion is not that person. He was, as Kev said, he is just a practice machine with unreal work ethic. And if guys like this can succeed, if we can see stars like me rise, then I think it's we have only a bright future ahead. I, I love everything Nate said. I mean, I'm so excited for the downtime in this game, which is really weird to say, but in that time, the game's gonna get a massive patch. Everyone's gonna kind of go back to their bases and be like, you know what? He laser made round of four. If a laser can do it, I know I can do it. Nibla got a little taste of victory. Showtime surged, but was you know kind of put down by a red hot a laser. Like there's so many cool little storylines that next year is gonna be amazing. And also, Korea had its cage rattle a little bit, but also kind of not. Like with Beyond was very clearly the best. So like, okay, no, 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 we still got it. Dark, interesting storyline there. Like, I, I was looking at him for a lot of that final ceremony, and he just, he was not devastated, he was not rocked, he was just kind of like, okay, I'll be back. You know, like, he knows he's good. We're gonna see more <laughs> of him. I can't wait to see where these guys go. Yeah, incredibly good. I mean, I mean, if Dark doesn't know that he's good, then none of us knows that we're anything with StarCraft. Like, then we just all gotta quit. Uh, I agree. I think this was a really awesome year, Sean. Like, if you just think about a couple of the big stories that we had this tournament, not just Beyond. I mean, obviously, he was playing in the Legacy of the Void beta, but the Laser, the Neve, and a couple of the other Europeans, and like Harstam, for instance. I always joke about his year of Harstam. But so many cool players being successful this year that really were not all that successful last year. Uh, then think about all the amazing events we had. You know, we went to countries we haven't gone to in a while. We had an awesome event in Mexico. We had a great event, in my opinion, in Tours in France with that amazing final between Showtime and Nurture. <coughs> Just if you put, you know, like the year in perspective and you look at all the moments, the finals, yeah. the, the cool games we've had, like, I think as a StarCraft fan, you can be pretty damn happy with this year and just cherish all the beautiful 
memories we Absolutely. created with each other. All right, well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Our job is now done at the WCS Global Finals of 2016. Bjorn is the official 2016 world champion. It's been a long, it's been an eventful 2016. We're going to be ready for 2017 as we begin the road to BlizzCon next year. <laughs> we'll see you again. <laughs>